I would like to just talk to you from my heart a little bit. Uh, what I, what the, the title, if you, if, I don't know if you would call this a message at all, but it's just a sharing of what's been on my heart, is, is what must we do to get ready? What must we do? I, I, I've been on this on my heart for a couple of weeks. It started with uh, uh, looking at the, the new construction that's going on around this area. I guess everybody's aware of it. The new home, if, you, if you're not aware of new home construction, it's going wide open. Uh, down in Harbin's, close to where I live, I was just uh, looking at a job the other day and the guy said they're projecting within a mile of his home 500 homes to be built there. Uh, Brother Billy, do you have any idea how many more homes would be in the Auburn city limits? Fifteen hundred and fifty sewer taps. Wow. Now you 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 said so. That's two thousand within eight miles of here, because from where I'm talking about is not far right across. Go kill Creek three sixteen crossover, and you're right there. So you're talking about two thousand more people. And the thing that's been on my heart just to share with you was. Lord, are we ready for this? As a church, I, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to, you, you can, this may be the last message Brother Chris ever lets me speak. You may disagree with me, but I'm just going to tell you what's on my heart. That's all I can do. But I, let me just, what, what, what confirmed this? I heard a message. I really didn't know. I, I didn't know. I told Miss Wanda I, I may go another way. I wasn't really sure till I heard uh, another pastor speaking. And I'm, I want to use some of the things he said. This is an inner city pastor from New York City. And he, this is what he said. He said, I walk the streets of New York every day and pray. And he said, but there's what we're smelling on the streets of New York now is not the normal smell that we've had for years, but you know what it is? It's marijuana. And he said, this is what's going to happen. He said, because of the legalization of marijuana, which will probably be soon in all the states, we know that's coming without a shadow of a doubt. And when that happens, there's going to be a great increase of addiction. This is the statement he made. He said, the beds won't hold them. The teen challenges in places that are Christ-based uh, addiction centers are not going to have the capabilities to hold the, the people that are going to be flooding because of addictions and problems. So I think, it has been on my heart for a long time, there are going to be people that are coming in the doors of this church searching for an answer. I'm telling you, when the world falls apart, that's where they're going to go. And when 9-11 hit, it's a fact, it's a fact in two weeks that they flooded, they flooded many of the churches. And i just tell you straight from the mouth of a lot of pastors did not know what to preach. They had not a word for them. And these people left. Just like one fellow said, it was one of the worst tragedies that ever hit. And we had pastors that were still preaching their series in the city limits. It's like, I need a word. I don't need, I don't need a, you see what I'm saying? And so when, when they come, when they come, will we receive them in the way that we should? Will we be ready? Now, my son and I were talking about this this afternoon. And we were talking about receiving people that are not quite like us. And that's what we're going to be like. You may sit beside somebody that doesn't dress like you, doesn't smell like you, doesn't look like you, you see? So... 
Having said that, uh, we, might, we must be prepared. An unprepared church, this is not me, but this is what I wrote when I heard, an unprepared church can become a judgmental church. You see that? An unprepared church can become an, a judgmental church. And what had happened in, when, in, in Romans chapter 15, what we're about to read, many Gentile believers were coming into the faith. Well, you had Jewish believers that were say, wait a minute, these people are not quite up to par, you see. So the, Paul gives us an illustration of how we're to receive. Now, we are, if you consider yourself strong, and, I, and I, when I look out at these people, I, I consider yourself to be strong in the faith. So uh, let's, let's read this. And, uh, speak, uh, and, and let's talk about this and see. And, and I'm asking you to be with an open mind and open heart and just to think. Uh, you could say, well, I'm nuts, and that's okay. But uh, let me just finish my notes, and I'll be done. But uh, will you pray with me, please? Father, I ask with all of my heart, Lord, I, I know that... Uh, I, I believe that, Lord, this is you've laid this on my heart, so I ask you, Lord, to please remove my thoughts out of the way. I, Lord, please let my opinions go. Help me not to, it, it's not about my opinions, not about, about me, it's, but, but it's you. Lord, help us to prepare us. Lord, there's maybe 2,000 more people coming into this area. How do we respond? Lord, how do we receive them? Is this a place they would want to come? Is this a place you want them to come? Lord, that's the question that we ask ourselves, is this a place that you want them to come? Dear Father, help us. Help us to be the body that you would have us to be. Lord, help us to be a church where the, your spirit flows freely and there be no obstruction. There'll be no hindrances, oh God, for the gospel truth. There'll be no uh, hindrances of the flow of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Oh, Father, help us, Lord Jesus. We I know, Lord, everyone in this room desires to be in the center of your will. Lord, help us. Guide us, Lord, and give us your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, verse 1 of chapter 15 says, We then, who are strong, ought to bear with the scruples or the, the uh, what is the King James word? Infirmities. Infirmities which I like that better, actually. <laughs> but it's the same thing, infirmity. We, we that are strong ought to bear with the infirmities or the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Do you see that? So just in simple, in simple terms, a church that receives, a, a church, uh, I think, would be one that we're not to please ourselves. It goes on in verse 2, let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification or building up. And of course you could say, well, who is my neighbor? But when you do that, you open up a sure enough can of worms because one of those people did that to Jesus, you remember? And he said a certain man went down from Jericho, fell among the thieves. So, so let's, let's just say that I don't want to say that. Who's my neighbor? For even Christ did not please himself but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. Oscar Wilde made a statement. I was reading it uh, yesterday that uh, the goal in life is to find ourselves. And he made another little statement. And I thought, that's the farthest thing from the truth there ever was. That's not the goal in life. The goal in life is to lose yourself, right? Self is to lose ourself and, and Christ is to be exalted in our life. So the church, if we're going to be the church, if, if I, and, and, and I told my son today, I said, I need this for me more than anybody. So please, I'm not pointing a finger. I, I, I want to be ready. I do. I've asked God all week, help me be ready. Help me be ready for what you're going to do. Help me. To, to not be a hindrance to the body of Christ, to, to not be a hindrance to Pastor Chris or anyone, anyone, you see. 
uh, for now, now he, he inserts a word here that it, it seems like it. Why does he do this all of a sudden? He's talking about unity. He's talking about strong, edifying uh, the weak. He's talking about pleasing our neighbors. He's talking about building up and edification. And he's talking about Christ did not pleasing himself. And then he goes right on to verse 4, and he talks about the Old Testament. Look what verse 4 says. For whatever things were written, uh, be, uh, written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of scriptures might have hope. Why did he insert that right there? When he's talking about edification. Well, we have to go a little farther to read. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Would you agree with me that we must have one mind and one mouth? Would you agree as a church? I w would you agree at one requirement would be that we are one. The Corinthian church, in fact, hold your spot, turn over a couple pages to the right. Please just look at chapter one of 1 Corinthians. Look at verse 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Why did he say this? There were divisions. There were divisions among the body of Christ. There were divisions. There were actually people within the church that had different opinion on the preacher they liked. It was the truth. Some liked Peter, some liked Paul, Apollos, and they, they were preferring men above each other. They were exalting these men. And Peter, Paul said, look, they're all yours. Everything is yours. Stop. Stop this division. So number one, we must be of one. If we're going to receive the influx of, 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 of the humanity that will be tired of the politics, I'm telling you, they're tired. There's no answers there. They, just look, just listen. It's foolishness. Absolute foolishness. There's no stability whatsoever. There's no stability in the government anymore at all. If there was for years, it's gone. There's, no st there's promises made that are never kept. There's things that, that society is losing. And where are they going to go to find a place of hope and stability if not here? if not here. And we're one of many. I'm, I'm not saying that we're, I'm not trying to put us above anybody at all. I'm just to, saying, can we be the body that the Lord has called us to be? And what do we need to do to be that body? Is there any requirements at all? Is there any change that needs to be happening at all? Is there anything I can do? Anything you can do? You see, now, he says that uh, the, the God of patience will, will grant us in comfort to be like-minded. Now, he goes, remember, verse 4 said that there are some, there's something written aforetime. There's promises in the Old Testament. There's learning there. Verse 6, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, th considering that. Verse 7. Therefore, like Brother Chris said, what is this there for? Considering what we just read, receive one another. Receive one another just as Christ also received us. Would, would you not say, and, and, and I say, one of the requirements of the church if we're going to be the body he's called us to be, we're to receive one another. We're to receive as Christ did us. See, he, it, he magnifies it. And, and, and this a pastor said, Ephesians 5, where he said, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Ooh -wee. 
you see? When, when, when you see in the scripture as Christ, as Christ, ooh, it's, a, it's like a hammer, right? It's just like a hammer coming down. Whoa, that's, that's everything. That's to death. And he gave his life for it. So am I, am I willing? That's the question I ask myself. Am I willing in my own heart to receive you as Christ received me? Warts and all. You see. See, we, I'm just going to be plain. You can't. You can't murmur, and you, you, we can't look at each other and, and, and be backbiters. It, it ain't going to work. I'm just telling you, it's not. I, I, the, cynic, the cynicism has to go out the window. I'm as, as bad as anybody. The judgmental, the looking, the talking, the word has got to go. If we're going to be one, if we're going to be one body, there can be no divisions. I, I tell you, from number one, that's got to go. There can be no division. And, and I, this is not humanly possible. It has to be a work of Christ in the heart. It has to be a work. I can't do it. I'm just telling you the truth. I can't even keep my mouth shut. You see. How do you know? Okay. So... Therefore, receive one another as Christ received us to the glory of God. So when you are receiving me, when I'm receiving you, when I'm, when I'm doing us, I'm doing it to the glory of God, right? For the glory of God and for the souls of men. We must become one voice. Now, this is a statement, really. The strong, maybe I'm repeating myself. I hope, hope I'm not. The strong must be strong for the weak. Or you know what will happen? The strong will become weak. Won't it? If you and I don't, in other words, and I'm not saying, but if it's just myself. If I don't change my, if my heart doesn't change to the point that I'm willing to embrace you, if I'm not willing to live for you as Christ did for me, and I begin to fault find and I begin to criticize, and I begin to say I don't, and I begin to murmur, and even, you, you, know, you know what happens? Then I become the weak one. See? It, the, the strong has nothing to do with how much scripture you know or how much you can quote. It has nothing to do with that. It's just simple life lessons. It's just simple life and love. Simple living the truth. Living God's word. The strong must be strong for the weak. Now, he goes on to give four Old Testament references right here. He just said in, in verse 4, whatever things were written, for, were written for our learning that we through patience and scriptures and comfort of the scriptures, mind you, might have hope. Now, he, goes, he went on. We just read where he said we're to receive one another. Jesus Christ in verse 8 says, Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers. Now he's talking about the gospel going to the Jews right there. You see, what is he trying to get to here? What is he trying to say? And that the Gentiles, see, oh, here it comes. These are different folks. They dress different. They act different. That the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. It is written, for this reason I'll confess to you among the Gentiles. That's an Old Testament scripture. And confess to you. So what he's saying, Paul's saying, these Gentiles are coming in and they get the same salvation. They're coming in here and they receive it just like you. So you have to receive them just like you received me, you see. And he knew it was going to be a problem. Because some of the Jews were saying, Whoa, wait a minute. They don't even dress right, you see. They're, they're sanctified. And I'm not being, being critical. What I'm saying is oftentimes we get these things in our mind that saying, well, he's got to, you know, he, he needs to be more like me. You see. And I will, we'll look at an Old Testament thing at 
I'd never seen this before in my life. So he says, and again he says, verse 10, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Can you imagine reading this for the first time? And you were a Jew? And again, verse 11, and again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord him, all you peoples. Gentiles, what do you mean? So could you say to, 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 to could you say, to, praise him, all you drug addicts, all you those on the street, all you those that don't look like us, all you that ain't church people? Same thing, right? Come, come. That's the gospel message. Come just as you are. Not, uh, wait a minute, you got it. Uh, I, it makes me think of, uh, and he was referring back in the, in the 70s, where there were people, even in California, where people were coming to Christ. Uh, and you know that's true, and I do too. In the 70s, they were c coming to Christ. It was a move of God. And there were a lot of churches didn't want them to be baptized in the church. They baptized them in the ocean. Because they didn't look the part. And I remembered Brother David Wilkerson saying this. I read it in his book when he was in the streets of New York preaching to the addicts. He said, we had boys and girls weeping, wanting to get saved with jeans on, and the church said, no, they got jeans on. True. It just didn't look right, you see. You see how twisted that is? And, you know, we can get that same mindset. I can get that same mindset. Wait a minute, I... I thought he should kind of, you see what I mean? We, 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 and it, could be, it can be a hindrance if I don't receive it. I'm not saying that we, we, we receive every sinful act. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying, how do I receive a stranger that comes in those doors that maybe not look like I think he ought to look or she? Do I just kind of stand off? How do I do it? I, 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 and again, Isaiah says, there shall be a root of Jesse, and he, this is a, Isaiah speaking, he shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now he goes on to say, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you do, if you and I will do one through third. To 12, and we realize that if we with one mouth glorify God, if we with one attitude love those that come in those doors, if I put Brother Chris above myself or Miss Connie, any of you, then I could be filled with a God of hope. You see, it's a process. I think, I think to myself, when God sees a willing body that's willing to just partake of this, he fills them with hope. Joy and peace and believing that you inbound in hope. Now, what if, what, which would you rather? Would you rather come into a body of believers that are full of hope in the Holy Ghost? Or a body of believers, it just seems good. You see? Oh, they got good music. I'm not knocking good music. I love music. But you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm just saying to myself, I, I think God, the main thing is that your Holy Spirit is moving here in me and you. And he has free reign. And that we abound in hope. I know for a fact that he said in one of the, I don't know exactly where it's found, but he said if an unbeliever comes in and, you, and, and all are prophesying and speaking of the, that person will fall down in repentance. Isn't that true? 1 Corinthians 14. When he hears the oneness of the body and he sees people are speaking the marvelous things of God, this marvelous truths of God that we would abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. This statement is true. Tell me if it's not. The worst and the weakest were the most comfortable around Jesus. Who was the most uncomfortable? Yes, the religious. They were the most uncomfortable. You take the, 
the lepers and, and the, the, the weakest. Yes, they were my, Jesus had, I forget how many meals, and most of them was with him. And I think if we are his hands, if, we, if I'm his feet, how much should I have that, that heart, you see, towards uh, them? Brother Chris has a great, uh, he receives people so way better than I do. I, I have a hard time with people. I'm just telling you. My brother and I talk about how sometimes we don't like people. Oh, people, people. You see, dealing with people. I'd have this much patience. And, and, and that's wrong. That's dead wrong, you see. And so if, if I'm to be, and we're to be the, the body that the Lord has wanted us to be, then, then we, we have to be different. How do I love and support the weak? Let's, let's look at an Old Testament example of, of a weak man and how, how he was treated by a man of God. Will you go to 2 Kings chapter 5, please? I've never seen this before, and Pastor Tim brought it out. I, I'd, never, I've, I've read this so many, many times, I never could understand exactly why. And maybe you have, but I, I didn't, so I hope this is not just old. Now, this is, we know that 2 Kings 5 is about Naaman, the commander of the army of the, of the king of Syria. He was an honorable man, and you know the story of how he was a leper. And that they, uh, the king sent uh, to the king of Israel, said, you, I'm sending him here. You heal. Well, the king of Israel just went nuts. What is, who am I? And he said, well, Elijah, Elisha. So Elisha says, go down to Jordan and dip seven times. Well, he was mad. You remember? He said, what, these other rivers are better than that. It's a dirty river. And they finally talked him into going and dipping seven times in Jordan. And when he came out, his skin was, was all brand new. And this is, we'll pick it up right there. And uh, he says in verse, uh, verse 15, verse 15 is, is, was his conversion verse, if you'd have it, was the Look what he says. He's, he's, he's cleansed, but he's also converted, converted, right? He says, and he returned to the man of God, he and all his aides, and came and stood before him. And he said, indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. I believe, right? That's what he said. Now I know there's no God except here. I know it. So therefore, please take a gift from your servant. Well, Elisha says, no, I ain't taking it. He urged him to take it in verse 16, and he refused. Now, notice verse 17. This, I never saw this before. And Naaman said, Then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loads of earth. For your servant will no longer offer either burnt offerings or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord. Yet in this thing, may the Lord pardon your servant. When my master goes into the temple of Rimon to worship there, and he leans on my hand, and I bow down in the temple of Rimon, when I bow down to the temple of Rimon, may the Lord please pardon your servant in this thing. So here's what he's saying. And I always could see that. I mean, here's Naaman going in with the king in the temple, and this is a heathen temple. And so Naaman says, I'm going to bow, you know, I'm just, but I don't really mean it. That's kind of what I always, I know that God is over here in Israel. I know that with all my heart. So please forgive me if I just bow in respect. But the earth is what got me. But here's what was said, was, what's amazing. The loads of earth, and here's what this Bible, the Syrians believed that the God of the country was actually in the earth. When, they, almost like a, earth, like a lot of people today, God is everywhere. So he believed that taking that earth with him to Syria, he's taking God with him. But he's weak. He's a new believer. He's brand new. He doesn't have all the things, right? He doesn't understand everything. 
does Elijah say, Gehazi, go get my, uh, my lesson plan. Let's teach this guy the right way. No, not at all. Look, what does he tell him? What does Elisha say? Then he said to him, go in peace. Isn't that incredible? Here is a, a, a young believer. He's a new believer. He's way off in that area. He's not, he's not, God is not in that dirt. But he thinks he is. He thinks he's, he still has some of the <clears throat> superstition in him. He's still there and he ain't learned yet. And see, that's what will happen maybe here. People can come in and they may have weird ideas. And it would, it'll take time. It'll take time. It'll take patience. It'll take understanding for us to be able to receive that one, right? And, and to understand it be, and, and that'd be something that God will have to give us. That God will have to give us the ability to discern and, and to embrace uh, those that we wouldn't normally embrace, you know? There's some people, I don't really want to touch them, let alone hug them. But, you see. So, how do we do? How do I get ready? That's my question. That's why I've asked the Lord all week. How do I get ready? How do I do it? How? How do I get ready for it? And you, can, you, you don't have to agree with me, but I tell you, I think it's coming. I do. I think it's coming. I think there's going to be people coming in these doors. I know they will if we're ready. If we're not ready, what will happen? That's what scares me. I'm just going to be honest with you. I told my son today, you know what God will do? He'll go somewhere where they are ready. He'll say, all right, just go down here. I got a people right here. I got a remnant here. They've been seeking my face. They're ready. I don't want to be that bunch. I, I, want to, I, don't, I don't want to be the one where they say, whoosh, I'm sorry, I tried, but you just wouldn't. And, you know, we could go right on having church and singing and hollering and be happy, and then the Lord says, no, I couldn't do it. That scares me worse than anything. Now, I wrote just a couple things down. I... One thing that I learned, that we learned from Daniel, is when he wanted to seek the Lord, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, you'll find me when you seek with me with, with all your heart. So the Bible says, I turned my face to the Lord. I turned with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, and he, he made confession to the Lord. So I think Daniel is an example of maybe if we turned our face to the Lord, if I turned my face to the Lord, if I seek him with all of my heart, if I, if I, with the best of my ability, seek him, because it can't be done with human flesh. It just can't. You know, we've tried that. We've tried. I mean, every, that's, you, Brother Chris has said it for years. If you win people with these things, you've got to keep them with it. We've tried, we've tried smoking. We've tried all the things that the world says you know what hit me? I, I, I couldn't believe it. I heard a pastor. He, he's on the radio. Some years ago, there was a, uh, a converted, supposedly converted celebrity who would come to their church and speak. But he had a fee. $70,000. And a jet. You had to fly him. And it had to be a certain kind of jet for him to come. I said, ain't no way. That's crazy. Because, but he's a good speaker, you see. He's well, I mean, people may just flock to him. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what, what brings people within the house of God. We're not, well, so if we turn our face to the Lord and seek him, now, if you would look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I'll be done. Oh, there's two verses, I think, here. 
Okay. And then this is talking about when, when uh, Moses was before the Lord and his, his, the, he just, his countenance was so bright, they put a veil over his face. But look, look, look what, I, what this verse says, in, starting at verse 17. Now the Lord is, the, is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see that? But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what does that say? I become what I am gazing at. Right? What has my face changes my heart. Just as Moses was before the Lord for days. And that glory. So when you and I behold the Lord, we are changed from image to image and glory to glory. Even as by the Spirit of the Lord. It's not a, it's not a flesh thing. It's not something that can be learned. It's not something that can be earned. It's something that comes freely from God. Isn't that incredible? And Moses didn't even know it. That's the thing about it. People that spend a lot of time with the Lord, they just look at it and don't even realize it. I'm afraid if it was such a thing, I'd look in the mirror every few minutes to see if I had it. Do I have it yet, Lord? Do I have, you see? I can mess anything up. We, humans can mess, hey, can't we? We can mess up anything. Just put our fingers in it and it's messed up. Now, here's just some simple notes I wrote. Start small. Start small. Start in your own home. Start with your own family, your own children, your own husband, your own wife. If you can't. You can't. I can't come to church and treat you special and then treat her like a dirt. What good is that? That's no good. Start at home. Start at home with your wife. If, if, there, if she's irritating the hound out of you, well, you might need to learn a little something. There might be a reason she's irritating you to half to death. So learn. Let Be teachable. Let the Lord teach you and, and start there. Start small. <clears throat> start with your children, your grandchildren. Don't get ill. Don't get so ill when somebody messes up your schedule. And try to be patient with those you love and then little by little the Lord gives us more opportunities and more responsibilities and more duties that we can reveal this, this hope that we have, right? But we start small. Don't, don't, we don't try to, we, you know, we immediately want to jump out like super Christian and, and be this thing that we think it, we have this image in our mind uh, of what we should be. So remember, uh, behold, you become what you behold. Now, this is what John Newton said. It's not, I'm, not, I'm not what I'm supposed to be or should be. I'm not what I want to be. But I'm not what I used to be. Isn't that good? Remind yourself that. Remind yourself that. I'm not, I'm not what I want to be. I'm not. I know I'm not what I should be. But I'm not what I used to be. Some things I know, it's maybe a few. <laughs> not a whole lot, but a little, you see. And so God takes us. He takes that yielded vessel. And he says, okay, I'll take this body, this body of believers, and I'll make them one. One mind and one heart. It'll, it'll take some time, don't you think? It ain't going to come overnight. But you're going to have to put up with me. Until the Lord takes me out of this world, right? You're going to have to, you may not like me, that's okay, but you're going to have to at least act like you do. You see? And so we, we, these little things that we allow to get in our crawl, so to speak, and just ruin our worship and ruin our, you see, it can happen. I'm telling you, it can. I know it can. I've seen it. I've seen it. Little things, that's little, <clears throat> little things that can, little foxes that spoil the grape, the scripture says, you see. And Satan is a master at getting in a congregation and weaving this discontented things in and out, in and out, you see. 
And next thing you know, there's divisions there. Well, well I don't like him. Like, Brother Lee, good grief. He, you know, see what I'm saying? I'm not trying. This is not a pitch for me at all. If, like I said, Brother Chris may say, you're done. You see, you, you, we have to maintain, we, as a body of Christ, we have to be the body of Christ. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So I am to treat you. I'm to treat my wife. I'm to treat my grand, my children. I start small. I start in little relationships where, where, uh, and, and try to work there. And then from there, the Lord gives us a little more responsibility, a little more responsibility to demonstrate his love. And then when, 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 when the world's falling apart and there's no answers there, and people come through those doors wanting to have answers, wanting to have someone to hear them will be maybe hopelessly addicted. Are we going to give them a phone number? See? Well, go down, go down. Just go. No, I don't want to do that. Do you? I want to know. I just go to pray. You see, we have God, I believe, I believe with all of my soul, the Holy Spirit will give you the answers. He'll give you the way to receive them. He'll anoint you with words out of your mouth that you couldn't believe would come out at the right time for that man, woman, boy, or girl that's so desperately in need. It doesn't make any sense at all. It, 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 I think it's coming. If it don't, you can just say I was wrong. But I believe the Lord is going to test us and see, I do not want to be that wedge that drives apart. I would like to be the glue that holds together, not in, in every area of my life, every relationship in my life, every one. I do not want to be the wedge that separates, you see. Anyone have a thought before we pray? Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for your the word you've given us. Lord, I, I don't even know I, I worry already that I didn't convey this in the right way. But Father, I know that we want to be the body you've called us to be. And Lord, we can't do that without your anointing. So please, Lord, lead us. Help us to be obedient in small areas of our lives. Help me, Lord, never to drive a wedge between my brother or sister or anyone. Help us, Lord, to be the glue, the adhesive that draws together. Help me to love as Christ loved the church. Lord, I, I'm so far from that. Please help us, Lord, to embrace one another. Lord, we, we're small, but Lord, you, you've always worked with small things. You've always taken small things and done great things. Lord, please, please take us and use us for your glory's sake. Use us to touch this community. Please prepare us for the days that are ahead. Please take away from our hearts all stubbornness, all pride, all foolish thoughts. Lord, help us to embrace the truth. Please open your word to us. Help us to turn our face to you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to do it, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.